on peace. Those who can maintain the world certainly do not lose their nations. Those who can maintain their nations certainly do not lose their families. Those who can take care of their families certainly do not neglect themselves. Those who can cultivate themselves certainly do not forget their minds. Those who can find the source of their minds certainly do not corrode their essential nature. Those who can completely preserve the integrity of their essential nature certainly do not waver indecisively on the way. Therefore, thoroughly close without. Cognizing much is defeating. Do not look, do not listen. Embrace the spirit calmly and the body will straighten itself. None can know another without attaining it in oneself. Therefore, the Book of Changes says, Close up the bag, and there is no blame or praise. When a boat is crossing a river, if an empty boat broadsides it and overturns it, the passengers in the first boat may very well be upset, but they won't be resentful. But let there be even one person in the second boat, and suppose he doesn't respond to the calls of the passengers in the first boat, he will surely be followed by ugly voices. The reason they are not angry in the former instance is that the boat is empty. The reason they are angry in the latter instance is that the boat is full. If you can empty yourself as a means of traveling through the world, who can criticize you? Habitual desires deplete people's energy. Likes and dislikes strain people's minds. If you don't get rid of them quickly, your will and energy will diminish day by day. What I call happiness is when people appreciate what they have. People who appreciate what they have do not consider extravagance enjoyable and do not consider frugality a sorry state. If you know the vastness of the universe, you cannot be oppressed by death or life. If you know the harmony of nurturing life, you cannot be concerned about worldly dominion. If you know the happiness of the unborn state, you cannot be frightened by death. Those who can reach the point where they take no pleasure in anything find that they can now enjoy everything. Since there is nothing they do not enjoy, their happiness is supreme. Those who want firmness must guard it with flexibility. Those who want strength must preserve it with weakness. When the spiritual light is stored in formlessness, vitality and energy return to perfect reality. Then the eyes are clear but are not used for looking. The ears are sharp but are not used for listening. The mind is expanded but is not used for thinking. When vitality passes into the eyes, vision is clear, and when it is in the ears, hearing is sharp. When it is in the mouth, speech is accurate, and when it gathers in the mind, thought is penetrating. If you seek to gain the world and forget the way of self-cultivation, you cannot even preserve your own body, much less any territory. Therefore, when order has not been stabilized while in a peaceful state, those who strive to govern will be imperiled. And when conduct has not been stabilized while there is nothing wrong with it, those in a hurry for fame will be broken. No fortune is greater than having no troubles. No profit is finer than suffering no loss. What action does for people either enhances or diminishes, either fulfills or destroys, either benefits or harms? All are dangerous, perils on the way. The great way has no form. Great kindness has no familiarity. Great eloquence has no voice. Great humility is not obsequious. Great courage is not conceited. If you do not neglect these five things, when people are caught up in the world, they are materially bound and spiritually drained. Therefore, they unavoidably suffer ailments from depletion. The spirit 
is the source of knowing. When the spirit is pure, knowledge is clear. Knowing is the capital of the heart. When knowledge is objective and impartial, the heart is peaceful. The spirit can rest on the tip of a hair, yet it is larger than the totality of the universe. The recalcitrant may seem knowledgeable without being knowledgeable. The dull-witted may seem humane without being humane. The impetuous may seem brave without being brave. Things depend on each other for completeness. When two people are both drowning, they cannot help each other. But when one is on dry land, then something can be done. So those who are the same cannot govern each other. This can only take place when there are differences. Put away the wine and stop the music and the mind suddenly feels as though it has suffered a loss. It is upset as though it has been bereft of something. What makes this happen? Using externals to amuse the internal instead of using the internal in such a way as to make the external pleasant. When the perceptions are clear, with profound discernment free from seductive longings, and energy and will are open and calm, serenely joyful and free from habitual desires, then the internal organs are settled and full of energy that does not leak out. The vital spirit preserves the physical body inwardly and does not go outside. Then it is not difficult to see the precedence of the past and the aftermath of the future. Outwardly, go along with the flow, while inwardly keeping your true nature. Then, your eyes and ears will not be dazzled, and your thoughts will not be confused, while the spirit within you will expand greatly to roam in the realm of absolute purity. We may see the tip of a hair while failing to hear a peal of thunder, or hear the melody of a song while failing to see a mountain. Why? A small fixation of attention results in a large measure of heedlessness. People all value what they can do well and demean what they cannot do well. However, they all drown in what they value and are stymied by what they demean. What they value is what has form, and what they demean is traceless. Clarity does not mean seeing others, just seeing oneself. Acuity does not mean hearing others, just hearing oneself. Understanding does not mean knowing others, just knowing oneself. Accusing others is not as good as accusing yourself. Demanding from others is not as good as demanding from yourself. When people bring up your flaws, you resent them. But when a mirror reflects your ugliness, you consider it a good mirror. If people can deal with others without getting the ego involved, they will avoid being dragged down. The eyes, ears, and palate do not know what to take and what to leave. When the mind governs them, they each find their proper place. Seen from this point of view, it is evident that desire cannot be overcome, yet it can be done to the point where insanity does not occur by any who master themselves and develop their nature, regulate sexual activity and moderate their dining, make their emotions gentle and act and rest appropriately, causing this all to be in themselves. Making a big deal out of doing good is like making a big deal out of doing wrong, insofar as it is not near the way.